Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Carpenter. For those of you who I haven't met, and I am going to do a back to school night presentation for you, um, and I'm going to send you this video. So I decided to tape it while I was in the classroom so I could show you a few things. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you while it records. Okay, so it's kindergarten back to school night at Bout Hills. September of 2020. These are just some of my goals for the year. Um, every year my number one goal is safety. I tell that to the kids every year. Um, it's extra important this year obviously because of the coronavirus. Um, however, um, we always take safety precautions no matter what. So this year the extra precautions that we're taking obviously are the six feet of distance and the masks. So when we have our mask breaks, when we have our mask breaks, I make sure that your children are six feet apart. Um, and we do that at 1045 every day. We also do that at 1215 each day. And then they do not have their masks on for snack, which is the 1045 time. And they also don't have their masks on for lunch, obviously. Another goal is independence. Um, I really push independence here in kindergarten. I um, had my own kindergartner at home last year and it he grew so much in one year so you're going to definitely see that growth especially with their independence um, when kids ask me to open their snack i have them try with their scissors first i think it's important that they always try on their own before asking for help um, they'll need to do independence with their zippering and getting their clothes on so i will help them as long as they try first and eventually they get it on their own another goal for the year is being part of a community we are a classroom community. Um, we spend time each day doing morning meeting where somebody talks about what they did the night before or somebody shares something and pretty soon we'll be starting show and tell. Another goal for the year is time management and organization. We've started to work on our time man management and our organization. Time management during centers, I give the students all of their centers at one time this year. because they come. I put them in a plastic baggie and they have to work on it so they manage their own time and they try to get all three centers that they're assigned to done in that hour and most of them are doing an awesome job at that and um, some of them are even finishing early with correct and accurate work um, and that they actually did a really good job on so i don't let them rush but i want them to also be aware of the time that it's taking them to get something done another goal for the year is organization so today we had a visit from the desk fairy um, who lives in our classroom and the desk fairy leaves treats for anyone who has a clean desk once a week so the desk fairy came today and yesterday i taught the kids how to organize their desks so she left a treat for everyone this morning because all the desks were organized from yesterday um, we want the children to learn responsibility for themselves so we talk a lot about tattling versus telling um, tattling is when you're trying to get someone in trouble versus telling is when you need help or you have something you want to share. Um, and then the also, obviously, the academic goals for ELA and math. Those are the two core content areas that we're focusing on this year because our day is shortened, but we do do some science and social studies throughout the day through read-alouds or during calendar time when we're talking about the weather or the seasons. So they are getting some social studies and science in there. These are the ins and outs of our classroom. Um, obviously, there's a new rule for absences. So in the event that your child is out sick, you'll need to call the office at, here at the school and let them know what your child's symptoms are. If it is a, a symptom of COVID-19, your child will need to have a negative COVID test as well as a doctor's note stating what their actual illness was before they're able to return to school. So maybe they have allergies or maybe they have a viral infection. So you'll need that note and the negative COVID test. If you don't want to give them the test or have them take the test, then they need to remain home for 10 days. So that's the choice that you have. Also, if your child is sent home the first time for allergies um, and you get a doctor's note stating like, yes, my child has allergies, these are the symptoms that you might see from him, they will not be sent home again um, as long as they have that doctor's note explaining that. So, I have a child who has asthma, so he will be sent home the first time. He has to go to the nurse's office for his inhaler. But after that, um, the nurses told me that if we get a doctor's note stating he has asthma, that he can um, stay in school and take his inhaler from that point forward. 
Um, so all absences need a note when you return. An illegal absence would be if you miss the bus or you're on vacation. Um, and they really frown upon 10 or more illegal absences. Kindergarten is not mandated in New York State, but the district will send home letters um, if your child is out for 10 days or longer. Um, during the school year, they'll send you a letter just letting you know these are the days, please try to have your child here more often, that kind of thing. Our lunch is scheduled every day from 1 to 1.30, um, and we do kindergarten recess from around 2.20 to 2.35. Um, we have our, we go right straight through from 10 a.m., we work straight through until 1, um, and then we have that 1 to 1.30 lunch, and then right after that, we have 1.30 to 2.15 of special area classes, and then we go out for recess. So the children's really academic of those core areas, math and ELA, are done by one o'clock each day, which is nice because it's really hard to teach kindergartners in the afternoon after uh, lunch and recess. So it's a good schedule for them and they're getting a lot of work done in the morning. We do set aside 15 minutes for snack each day. Please try to send healthy snacks um, and ones that aren't gonna really spill all over the classroom or be sticky, like no syrup, things like that. Um, our classrooms are nut free and water is preferred over juice, but obviously you can send juice if your child wants juice with their snack or their lunch. Um, you can also keep a waterproof bottle with them throughout the day. I have it on their desks and I'm constantly doing the W for water um, to remind kids to take their mask down for a minute and take a sip of water so nobody gets dehydrated. Um, and during our um, 15 minutes of snack time is when we take our first mask break. We've been doing that outside um, so that's been really nice for the kids. Once the um, weather changes, we'll be inside for that snack time. We will not be having any birthday celebrations this year due to COVID-19. Um, and you can't bring in any small trinkets or like pencils or stickers from home really. Um, but I will have a crown for your child to wear and um, a little hat prize type of thing. Um, and they will also get to sit in the birthday chair for the day, which is exciting. Um, homework. So some kids have been asking about homework. It's tough because in kindergarten, I think that as a parent, I would prefer that children not have homework because I want them to be able to have that time to kind of chill out after a long day of school. But as a teacher, I also want them to carry over what they've been working on in the classroom at home. So what I do is each month you will receive a calendar with optional educational activities. Um, and I just ask that you also read for 10 to 15 minutes with your child each day. You can just check off the activities. One might be like, go around your house and count the number of doors. How many doors did you find? Or um, how many people are in your family? Um, so those, type of, those types of um, activities. And some of them are movement activities, like go outside on a nature hunt and try to find these three things. Um, so those are just samples of what you might see on the homework calendar. I also do have monthly homework packets for any parent who wants that for their child, but I will not be collecting that packet. Again, just with everything going on with COVID, I don't think it's a good idea to be going back and forth with um, things from home back into school, and then it takes me a while to grade it, so I usually have to take it home to grade it, so I will not be collecting it, but feel free to send me a note saying that your child completed the packet or completed the calendar, and I'll send them home a homework um, award for that month. So we're moving on to literacy. In literacy, we do a lot of read-alouds, we do writing workshop. Right now we're working on just labeling pictures with the beginning or the beginning and ending sounds that they hear. Um, we have started literacy centers. They're going really well. They're different than I have ever taught literacy centers, but um, we will also be teaching guided reading in small groups. So our plan for right now is that um, I'm gonna do two groups a day and I'm gonna pull like four kids at a time into the conference room so they can be six feet apart. The conference room is directly across from our classroom. So it would only be 15 minutes. So two groups would be a half an hour. And during that half an hour, the special education teacher, Mrs. Grady, will be in the classroom monitoring and helping with centers as well as our classroom aid, Mrs. Mondo. Um, so we're gonna attempt that. Mrs. Grady then the other half an hour of that hour block for literacy, she will be pulling um, some groups as well. So your child will be seen for reading every single day. They just may be working with me. They may be working with Mrs. Grady. Um, and then we also do morning message. So that's fun. I always tell a joke in morning message. So the kids like that. Um, 
we also, like I've said um, on Blooms, we started the Hegarty program for phonemic awareness. And it's really hard for the kids to hear me or see my mouth movement when we have that video going. So I have um, purchased the videos by Hegarty and I play the video and then I do it along with the teacher on the video each morning. It's about 10 minutes. Um, we also have a new phonics program by Badlier. So this is the phonics book phonics to reading, from phonics to reading. So we do that every day also. And that's like gives us the letter of the week and the sound that we should be working on as well as sight words. I also recommend looking up the Better Alphabet on YouTube. Um, that is something that I learned about when I was in Schenectady and it talks about how the muscle movement and accentuating the muscle movement in your mouth can help the child with their memory of the letter and sound. So for example, A goes ah, 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 ah. So you really accentuate but it can also say a a a a a a a a so you really want to show that mouth movement um so you can watch the better alphabet with your child at home have them practice that because that is how i teach the letters and sounds this was just an example of the literacy centers for the week so each child gets um, their manipulatives and their sheet that they have to do or um, whatever that may be they get that in their bag each day. So I prepped that the night before school before leaving. So they've really enjoyed that. Um, some kids lay on their belly, some kids um, lay on their belly on their yoga mat, some kids are sitting at their desk, some kids are standing at their desk. I'm pretty lenient about that right now at this time of the year because they're still really young. Um, and it's really hard to sit at a desk all day long. I, I know that even when I was in middle school, I preferred to do my homework laying on the ground. So um, I will, by the end of the year, make sure that they are able to sit for longer periods of time at a desk um, and be ready for first grade. But at this point in the year, I think it's important to give them choice so that they want to come to school and they want to be here because um, it's fun. Uh, these are our social studies and science units. Um, we are trying to get to all of them. We don't know if we will. Like I said, ELA and math are our number one goals this year. Um, but we do an animals two by two unit where we actually get a different animals each week um, to compare. So we might do red worms and earthworms and we might do chicks and ducks. Um, so we're really hoping to continue with that at least at least that science unit this year. We also do a trees and weather unit. In social studies we talk about different types of families, American symbols, holidays and traditions. Uh, we'll talk about the election a little bit this year. Um, and that's mostly done through that morning meeting time where we're kind of looking at the calendar. What's this holiday on the calendar? And I kind of do a read aloud about that holiday or something like that. So math, um, really your children are going to be working a lot with 10 frames. I know I talked about them in the orientation video, um, but here they are up in the corner here. So they're going to want to be able to just look at that and stupidize, which means they look at that and they can automatically see that this is three. So we work a lot with 10 frames in the beginning of the year. Your child will need to be able to write the numbers one, zero through 20. We work on adding and subtracting within five. We work on measuring. We also work on geometry. They have to identify 2D and 3D shapes. So those are just some of the math topics. Um, I also wanted to show you quick that each child has their own ELA kit that I made this summer. So um, inside you'll see our alphabet and our sight words, they each have magnetic, this one's Dylan's, they each have magnetic letters inside. I don't know if you can see that. Magnetic letters, they also have a witch's finger that they can use for pointing and reading. Um, they have a, a die um, for when they play a rolling game. They also have Play-Doh for when they are playing a Play-Doh game, as well as a blank spinner so that they can put it right on top of the paper and use their own spinner. So they really enjoy that. They also have a math toolkit which has the hundreds chart, it has different strategies, it has a number line, different strategies for adding and subtracting, as well as the numbers zero through 10. It has some unifix cubes um, for when we start adding and subtracting. It has some little tiny mini erasers that they can use as manipulatives. And it also has these tokens that we use on 10 frames, as well as these little unit cubes that they can um, put together to make a 10. And there's also a die in there too. They really like working with those and they've been keeping them pretty neat and organized because of that desk theory. So if they come home and they told you that they were make, using magnetic letters or something, rest assured that every child has their own. Um, here's our schedule in the morning. 
kids arrive from 9.30 to 10.15, and that's when um, they do their morning work. I usually have a note on the board um, with an example of what their morning work should look like. Um, some kids are eating breakfast. I'm working one-on-one -on -one with some children. That's really when I'm trying to get that extra help to those kids who need it. Um, if somebody's struggling in ELA or math, that's when I plan to kind of work one-on-one -on -one with them. That's at RTI. And that's when I'll be assessing them. And we also have morning announcements then. At 10.15 to 10.30, we do our phonics book. From 10.30 to 10.40, we have Hegarty. That's that phonemic awareness program. Then we wash hands. Then we have snack. And then we wash hands again. Then we, that's our Osara mask break. Then at 11, we come in for writing. At 11.15, we start that ELA centers and small group instruction. And then at 12, we do a, like a 15-minute mask break where I also do some Go Noodle um, on there, which is a website that gets the kids moving and grooving. So I like that little break in between. It kind of breaks the morning up for us. And then after math, we, or then we go to math, small group instruction. And then after math, we wash hands, we get ready for lunch. I wipe down the kids' um, desks for them and I put down paper towels at lunch. Um, we wash hands after lunch and that's when they have their specials. We work on a six day cycle. So today, for example, was a day two. So they had music today, but tomorrow would be a day three. So they'd have PE. And I will send home a monthly calendar starting in October of what each day is um, so that you can be prepared to wear sneakers, have your child wear sneakers, or maybe they want to wear fancy boots or something. They'll be able to do that. And then two o'clock is our um, intervention block. So that's when like speech pathologists or um, occupational therapists or physical therapists would take students who receive those services. And it's also the time that we pack up. And then we have recess, we wash our hands, and we go home. Also, just want to share with you some other adults that work with your children. Um, Mr. Piccioni is the principal. Mrs. All is our head secretary. She is the one basically in charge of the office. Um, Mrs. Sauer is the one who lets you in. Um, Mrs. Duffy is the art teacher. Mrs. Wallace is the librarian. Coach All and Coach Williams are both our PE teachers. Our class is assigned to Coach All this year. Mrs. White is our music teacher. Mrs. Kayano is our computer aide. She solves all our technological problems. Mrs. Davis and Mrs. DeMarco are our school nurses. Mrs. Larson is our speech therapist and Mrs. Van Sleet is our school counselor. Here's just a here's um, some information on how you could contact me. Um, obviously sign up for Blooms if you haven't done that. I, I submit a lot of pictures on there. Um, so you'll see a ton of pictures throughout the day and you can kind of use that to talk about your children. Um, and I really don't pay attention to who I'm taking pictures of at the time, so I apologize if you don't see a ton of pictures of your child, but my goal when I take the pictures is to really get an up-close view of what we're doing so that you can talk to your child about it at home. But I do try my best to get everybody in there. Um, I will also, um, if you need me, you can send a note or you can call me before school starts um, at the school phone number. You can also email me or Bloom's message me. I will try my best to get back to you as soon as possible, but it will definitely be within 24 hours. I'm pretty good. I know I had a lot of siblings um, of students that I currently have right now, and they can they can attest to the fact that I'm, I'm pretty good. I mean, even at nine o'clock at night, if I get a message, I usually shoot you a message back. So um, feel free to do that if you need to. Um, my break is from 1.30 to 2.15 every day also, so you can always reach me during that time. That's a good time to do it. Um, I have, please sign up for a conference on here, but today we talked a lot about conferences and we're not really sure how they're going to look yet. Um, so I will be sending out a sign up for conferences as soon as I know what conferences are going to look like, whether they be on a Zoom meeting, whether they be in person, whether we're having half day for conferences or full day for conferences, we're really not sure because our half day ended last year at 1140, so the kids would only be here for an hour um, and a half, but um, so we're still waiting on guidance from the district about that. I think that is it. I'm just going to quickly hold the um, camera up so that you can see the classroom for those parents who haven't been in the classroom. So everybody has their own bucket. And in their bucket, they have a mesh bag full of like different work, work um, mats that they need to use. They have their headphones. They have an eraser and a whiteboard and a marker, as well as their phonics book. 
That's also where their Chromebook goes. I have my son here being very patient while I videotape. That's Jake. He comes in here at the end of the day so the kids know him. Um, we have mailboxes and some manipulatives over there that I passed out. Everyone has their own bucket against the window that I hold some of their supplies in like markers and colored pencils. If you had bought your supplies with the original kindergarten list, it did change. Um, the supply list changed a little bit when we found out that special area teachers were going to be pushing into our classroom. So Mrs. Duffy did ask that you send in markers and colored pencils. So if you haven't done that, that would be helpful. Um, I do have extras if you can't get them. And everybody has their ELA kit in there. Over here, we have our cubbies. This is where we keep our yoga mats. I do put them out in the afternoon and they get sanitized by the custodians. We also keep our backpacks in there and they go all the way back so they're not touching anyone. We do have a calendar, but I also do calendar um, on the computer. So those Chromebooks every day that we're using, that's when they, um, that's when they use the Chromebooks really is I have them joining me on calendar because I don't really have the kids coming up and touching their numbers and things like that this year. So they're following along on Starfall calendar time with me. Right here, I have this ingenious um, idea of toy bins, which they love. I can't take credit for it, it was all Mrs. Sumner, but this summer we got together, we made bags of toys and we'll see, kids in their toy bucket. Here's Olivia's. They have different bags. She's got, um, it looks like she's got some characters in here that she plays with. On Mondays, if they want to trade in, they can trade in their toys and they are allowed to pick two new bags and the bags that were in their bucket go into a two week holding period um, in a basket. Here is the basket up here. I sprayed them with lace wall. They go up there um, for two weeks and they're not back, brought back into the rotation until then. Um, I think that is pretty much it. Um, if you have questions, please um, ask them on the Google Doc. Um, oh, one more thing. Lunch and breakfast is free until December. I confirmed that with Mrs. Minnick in the cafeteria. It is free. Um, and you just, just send me a no or a message on Blooms if your child wants the breakfast or lunch. The app is funky right now and saying that some people have a negative balance. That's not accurate. So they're still working out some kinks with the app. Um, so you can sign up for the lunch on the app, but just also let me know, um, whether it be a note or a message or a quick email, whether or not your child is going to buy breakfast and lunch um, because they are free. So they're more than welcome to have them. I think that is it. So I'm gonna log off. And if you have any questions, please ask them on the Google Doc or feel free to email me and we will answer them on the 29th. Um, I look forward to seeing all of you. Bye. Want to say bye, Jake? Bye.